Come hither, young woman, how are you? I'm going to tell you right now, we are going to do great things. Liberalism's a cancer in this country, and we're going to wipe it out. I'm the cure. And I'm telling you, what's the name of your YouTube channel, little one? NYC for yourself. And, oh, that's a very good thing. God bless you. Let me do finish my interview, and I'll take pictures with you. But um, uh, they're horrible people. I'm telling you, she's a she's a dunce. She's a, she's she's more stupid than Joe Biden. She doesn't even know her own name. Camila Kamala Potato Potato. She's a horrible person. She's really dumb and tampon Tim. They really are communists. They're horrible. And we're gonna win. And we're gonna win bigly. Thank you so much. God bless America.
lines all the way down there. Everybody's been here for four or five hours.
Long Island, which I know very well. And I'm thrilled to be back in the state I love with thousands of proud, patriotic New Yorkers who are really the heart and soul of America. We know that. And the reason I'm here is because it hasn't been done in many decades. It hasn't been done for a long time, but we are going to win New York. can honestly say it, and we're going to do it. We have to do it. We do it, and the election nationwide is over. We take over the White House, and we fix up our country, okay? So as you know, three days ago, there was yet another assassination attempt on my life. I didn't know it was by a violent, radical left mobster. This evil would-be assassin got within a few hundred yards of where I stood, but thankfully, our outstanding Secret Service agent, and they are outstanding, spotted the barrel of his rifle in the bushes. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? He saw a barrel of a big, big this was a big barrel. This is a big, this you don't want to even talk about, AK-47. But he saw the barrel coming out a little bit out of the very lush bushes, and he took fast action to stop the gunman before I even entered the line of sight. And I want to express my thanks to the U.S. Secret Service, who was there that day, and to all of the sheriffs and law enforcement down in Florida, the heroes who 
help to apprehend the attacker. And by the way, you possibly heard the story. So the secret agent, service agent, pulled out the gun and started shooting. He's in a barrel. He didn't talk like a lot of people. They talked. How are you, sir? What would you like to talk about? Would you like to talk about the weather? No, he pulled out the gun and he started shooting at him. And the villain... No, but think of this. This could only happen with a woman because men aren't smart enough. I hate to tell you that. So he dropped his gun. His car was a block away and he started running because the, they had him. And he was running, running, running. And a woman driving a car innocently said, he looks like a bad person to me. He looks very suspicious. And she followed him and pulled up to the back of the car and started taking pictures of his license And she took the pictures of his license plate, perfect, beautiful pictures like a professional photographer, and sent them to the sheriff and said, I just looked at a man, there was something strange going on. Who the hell would do that, right? Only a woman. Oh. And I asked the sheriff today, I said, so sheriff, if you had a thousand events, how many people would have done that? Man or woman, how many people would have done that? Followed him, taking pictures of the license plate and also the type of truck that he was driving. He said, maybe none. So she's a hero, I gotta meet her. And because of that, they were then able to catch him in a very speedy drive down the various highways in Florida, but they got him and they got him fast, but I, I think it's incredible. So the agent and that wonderful woman, and with all of my heart, I thank you all for your incredible valor. What you've done is incredible. What the people of our country and law enforcement does in this country is incredible. Tonight, let me also deliver a message straight to Kamala Harris. Have you heard of her? Who, by the way, was just rated by far the most liberal senator in the U.S. Senate. More so even further left than Bernie Sanders and Pocahontas. Pocahontas, she's more so. Elizabeth Warren, she's more left than Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. Let me also deliver a message straight to Kamala Harris, the radical left Democrat politicians, and the fake news media. Look how many of them. We've got to get our media back in this country. We've got to get them back. But the message is it's time to stop the lies, stop the hoaxes, stop the smears, stop the lawfare and the fake lawsuits against me, and stop claiming your opponents will turn America into a dictatorship. Give me a break. Because the fact is that I'm not a threat to democracy, they are. They're doing things in politics that have never been done before in the history of our country. And worst of all, with their open borders and bad elections, they have made us into a third world nation. Something which nobody thought was even possible. Americans deserve a campaign based on the issues. We try and keep it on the issues. And God has now spared my life. It must have been God. Not once, but twice. And there are those.
those that say he did it because Trump is going to turn this state around, he's going to turn this country around, he's going to make America great again. And we're going to bring back religion into our country. These encounters with death have not broken my will. They have really given me a much bigger and stronger mission. They've only hardened my resolve to use my time on Earth to make America great again for all Americans, to put America first. To put America first. Earlier today, I was honored to receive the endorsement of the rank and file membership of the Geeksters. I love the trucks you've ever seen. They delivered the concrete and all those buildings I built in New York. But, you know, this hasn't happened in so many decades. We won the overwhelming majority of the local chapters and the members, and as a result, the national organization has refused to endorse the Democrat candidate for the first time in many, many decades. And I also want to thank Keemster's president, Sean O'Brien, amazing man and all of the incredible rank-and-file teamsters across the country, because this was a surprise. It's automatic. They endorse the Democrats, automatic for many, many decades. But you know what? They said, they looked at her, and they said, we're not going there, I'm sorry. These are tough people. And together, we will secure our borders. We will protect our workers. We will defend our jobs. We will rebuild our country with American skill and American pride. And just as a little side note, we should give them a round, especially because of what they and how they voted today. If they voted the other way, I wouldn't give them a round. But the Teamsters built out this beautiful stadium for tonight's event. Thank you, Teamsters. Thank you. Great job. To every hardworking American, whether you live in a red state, a swing state, or a state with a failed Democrat rule, this year we need to elect all Republicans up and down the ballot. We have to clean out and straighten out our country. With your vote, we are going to rescue our country. We are going to rescue our Democrat run state. We are going to start by saving the great state of New York. Is that good? of stress. The only thing that I will increase are your incomes and your love for your state. We'll come roaring back again. Throughout American history, from generation to generation, New York has always set the standard for American life, and they have. It's been a high standard, too. Our cities were the center of business, arts, culture, our streets, ports, waterways, and they were the arteries of American commerce. They were absolute arteries. And our towns like Uniondale, Levittown, Hicksville, Huntington. These were great, great towns where you grew up and you loved and you stayed. But look at what has happened to New York and the other states, all run by radical left Democrats, every single one of them. Our heavy industries have exported overseas, and our middle class has been eviscerated, right here at home, been eviscerated. 
Housing costs are out of control. Inflation has cost a typical family $28,000. Think of it. In less than four years, $28,000. And we filthy encampments. We have horrible, disgusting, dangerous, filthy encampments of junkies and homeless people living in places that our children used to play Little League Baseball. Which they don't get to play very much anymore, do they? Over the past three years in New York City, there has been a 29% increase in robbery, a 36% increase in felony assault, a 42% increase in grand larceny, a 75% increase in carjackings. Did you buy a nice car lately? While 200 police officers leave the NYPD, New York's finest, I always say, I knew it well, New York's finest. They leave every single month, 200 people a month, incredible people. They're incredible people. The trains and subways are squalid and unsafe. The median of our highway, all those medians, they spend all that money, they're falling down, they're rotting. Businesses are fleeing. The mobs of illegal migrants are being put up in luxury hotels at your expense while our great veterans live on the freezing or steaming sidewalks right outside the main entrance to where the migrants enter their hotel. Think of that. Think of it. We have veterans lying on the street, squalid, lying on the street, sometimes freezing, sometimes it's hot, it's summer. And they're looking at people come in, just came into our country, and they're going up to the 17th floor of their suite. How crazy has our country become? And can you imagine what those veterans, when they watch this, must be saying? But listen to this. Can you also imagine what the migrants must be thinking? They're saying, can you believe this? We just came from a place, in many cases, they were in prisons. And now they're living in hotel suites while our veterans are living on the street. And so I say to the people of New York, with crime at record levels, with terrorists and criminals pouring in, and with inflation eating your hearts out, Vote for Donald Trump. What the hell do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Think of it. What the hell do you have to lose? Yes, you think You know, some of you remember that was a phrase that I used for our black population years ago in 2016. I said, with the worst housing conditions, the worst education, the worst this, the worst that, the most crime. I went through 12 different things and it wasn't on the sheets. And I'm saying, boy, that's really terrible. And I said, and I was at like 2%, not too good. And I said to the black population gathered in front of me, vote for Trump. What the hell do you have to lose? I said that, same thing. And you know what happened? I got eviscerated when I went backstage. I went backstage, but I'm not like Biden where he takes it. I, you know, I fight back with my people. Remember, we still signed the check. They said, sir, that's a terrible thing to have said. I said, what is, when you said, what the hell do you have to lose? It's terrible, it's demeaning, it's horrible. I said, but it's true. You know what happened? The next day, I picked up 10 points with the black population. And now, because of all we've done, we're at the highest level of black support in the history of the Republican Party. And by the way, the Hispanic support, do we have any Hispanics?
The Hispanic support is off the charts, and they don't know what the hell to do about it. It's off the charts. And we just had some great polling come out. I think the most accurate poll over the last eight or nine years was Rasmussen. They just came out with a poll that we're five up. We're five up. Five up. We should be 35 up, to be honest with you. You know, some people can't break an old habit. That's really what it is. So I say to you, vote for Trump, and I will turn it around very quickly with four more years of Kamala Harris. New York State will be like a third world nation if it isn't already. It is. <laughs> I think it is. With Trump, the Empire State will once again be the envy of the entire world. We will have no crime, only success. And unlike your current radical Democrat regime, I'm not driven by partisan ideology. I'm driven by results. And I'm driven by New York common sense. It's common sense, right? right? It's common sense. You know, I like to say the party this is a great party. I like to say the party is really, you know, we're conservative and all that, right? Who knows? You know what we are? We're really people with common sense. We need walls. We need good elections. We want low taxes. We want great police officers that are well taken care of. We don't want to defund the police. We're the party of common sense more than anything else. And it's picked up a lot of steam. It's true. My first week back in the Oval Office, I will clean up and call up your governor and mayors all across your state, and I will tell them it's time to work together. They're largely Democrats. It's time to work together for the good of the people. Going to do it. And despite all of the persecution I've endured from the corrupt judicial system in New York, it's a corrupt system. I love the people of this state. And I want to give back. I want to give back to you. I've had a great life. I want to give back to you. We're going to give it back to you. We're going to make this city and we're going to make this state incredible again. Together, we will rebuild our roads, bridges, highways, and airports. They're falling apart. They're falling down. We will renovate New York subway. Oh, that's beautiful. I used to go to school on the subway. Can you believe it? I mean, I like to say it's not so long ago, but it probably is. What do you think, Bruce? I guess it is. But my parents would drop me off at the subway and I'd go to Union Turnpike or I'd go to wherever I... They had no fear that I was going to be disappearing. They would take me to a subway, put me on and say, bye, darling, bye. If you do that today, you have about a 75% chance that you'll never see your child again. What the hell has happened here? What has happened? We will renovate the New York subway so that the greatest city in the world finally has again the greatest transit system anywhere in the world. You have the basics. We have to clean it. We have to take care of it. We have to give it a little love. And we have to get the criminals the hell out of there. We will once again Support our incredible police officers, New York's finest. You know, I've got the support. To me, this is so important. I think to you, it's a, every single police group in the nation is supporting me. The other day, the Fraternal Order, it's the largest. They gave us 400,000 police and they gave us a unanimous endorsement. We have it from everybody. We have it from everybody. We will work with the mayors and the governor to rebuild your defunded and depleted police forces, including New York's finest and NYPD. Look, I know so much about, I love New York's finest. I used to be in Brooklyn. I had an office with my father in Brooklyn. And we used to go in Brooklyn to a White Castle. Did anyone ever hear of it? And my father would say, no, that's the best place. Only 12 cents a hamburger. Remember 12 cents. Bruce, 
We had a Bruce, how good is Bruce? Bruce Blakeman, one of the greats. He wanted an upset. You know, this was another, this is a Republican. He ran a couple of times. You couldn't beat this, this hoax of Democrats. He ended up winning. He's done such a good job, he's now unbeatable. They don't even run anybody against him. Great, great, really great. We got a lot of them. Joe Cairo's here. Joe, are we going to win, Joe? What do you think? Joe Cairo. Don't mess with Joe, right, Joe? We love you, man. Your family's great, too. But I will stop the Kamala crime wave, and we will do everything we can. We're going to get these violent criminals behind bars. We're going to get them out of our country. We're going to take them back to the country from which they came. A few months ago, I visited with the grieving family of a New York City police officer, Jonathan Diller. You know Jonathan Diller? I was hoping his family could be with us. He was just 31 years old, gunned down during a traffic stop by a vicious thug, leaving behind his incredible wife, Stephanie, and family, and family, their one-year-old son. What a son. And it's, are you here? Are, are they here? They could be here. Is, is Stephanie here? Because you know, it was a bond and she was so great. And I think she's here. It's hard when you have 19,000 people. And Stephanie, unlike a lot of my friends, doesn't want adulation. Honestly, what she wants more than that, she wants her husband back. That's what she wants. She doesn't want adulation. I have other friends. You'd find them. I have other friends. If you uh, said their name, they'd be jumping up. Here I am. Here I am. Stephanie doesn't want that. What a great family. What a great family. And what a great, great guy he was. The criminal charge was savagely murdering Officer Diller, was previously arrested by the NYPD 21 times, right? 21 times, Bruce. And the accomplice driving the car had been arrested 14 times, but he was actually much worse. He was more vicious. 14 times, but he was actually far more vicious. This is the kind of story we hear every single day under radical Democrat policies like cashless bail, cashless bail. You kill somebody, and you're out on the streets in two hours. Cashless bail has been a disaster for our country. Kamala Harris wanted it no matter where she went. She boasted about being the leader of the movement of cashless bail, just like she led the effort to defund the police. You know, she was the leader of the effort to defund the police, and now she's running for president. But a little while ago, a little while ago, like everything else, no fracking, no this, no, she changed her mind. Now she says she likes the police. She can't say love, but she says like. She's made a lot of progress, but you know the first thing that would happen is she will go to defunding the police, if that's even possible to think about. But when I get back into the Oval Office, the madness ends and the law and order is going to return to our country. A fully reformed federal Department of Justice will deliver massive public safety funding for New York and other Democrat-run cities that are under siege. But in exchange, they will give our police back their protection and their respect. We are going to take care of our police, and we're going to respect our police. Everyone here does. I tell the officers all the time, you have no idea how the people love you, but Sometimes they don't feel it because of what the Democrats do to them. They will end deadly sanctuary city policies. They will terminate cashless bail and they will return to proven policing methods like we had under Mayor Rudy Giuliani that made New York City the safest big city in America. Simultaneously, we are going to make life in New York State affordable again, little word affordable. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for four more years of job losses. Look at what's happening. Businesses that are fleeing money draining out of your state 
and hundreds of thousands of illegal migrants sucking your public resources dry. You know, I've always heard for 20 years, I've heard that New York City has no money, and yet they're going to spend $3 billion on illegal migrants, migrants, and they're not getting it from the federal government. You wonder, they never had money, but they have $3 billion to take care of people that came into our country illegally. Doesn't make sense. But under the Trump economic plan, we will cut your energy prices in half within 12 months. Half! Because we have more liquid gold under our feet and we don't use it. We go to places like Venezuela when we have more than Russia. We have more than Saudi Arabia. You remember I got Anwar approved in Alaska. It's the biggest site anywhere in the world, probably bigger than Saudi Arabia, bigger than Russia. And what did they do? In the first week in office, Ronald Reagan tried so hard he couldn't get it. I got it. The biggest site in the world, Alaska. And in the first week in office, they terminated it. We'll have it back very quickly, I promise you that. We will rapidly defeat inflation. We're going to bring your prices down. All they're doing is they've cut it, but you're up 55 or 60 percent. People that used to live a nice life four years ago, they can't afford an apple. A woman, they showed a picture of a woman the other day. I said, boy, that's sad. That should never happen to her. She went to the counter, the cashier. She had three apples. And when she was standing with the cashier, she realized she didn't have enough money for one of the apples. And she took the apple, brought it back. She bought two apples, and she would be happy. That should be happening in our country. We will cut interest rates, cut insurance costs, and insurance is horrible. And massively, we will cut your taxes again. I gave you the largest tax cut in the history of our country. Here we have some. Kamala Harris, as you look at her plan, will give you, very simply, the largest tax hike in American history. She's going to lift your taxes. This is the only person I've ever seen at Biden to. They announced that they're going to raise your taxes, and it's supposed to be good politically. I don't think so. I don't know. I've never seen that, Anthony, before, where they say they're going to raise your taxes. They're going to raise your taxes. The vote for me, I'm going to raise your taxes. Can you believe I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that because the news was saying it. They're going to say, they're going to attribute it to me, I can't do that. I, I told, told our great, great first lady, lady I will not be sarcastic, sarcastic anymore. anymore. When you joke, or when you're sarcastic, the fake news will take a story like that. I'll say, I never said I was going to raise your taxes. Don't be honest, you're kidding me, kidding me, kidding me. These people are the worst. When, when I, I imitated, imitated Joe, Joe Biden, Biden because he couldn't get off the stage. So, so I imitated him because, him because he couldn't, couldn't find the stairs and look around and finish the speech when it would last. The speech would last maybe three minutes, maybe, maybe a little less than that. that. And then, and then you, you want, want to get off the stage, and it always remember goes go like this. But you remember that we're running against somebody who's actually much worse. Ready? And it go like this. And then he'd walk in a different direction, so where is it? And Secret Service did a great job. They'd come up with the stage and then pull them out. Like today, we have four or five stairs. You always have four, five, six stairs. The more it's government owned, the more stairs you have. always have a lot. So I said to our great first lady, who can draw a crowd? Did you watch me tonight on television, first lady? People love our first lady out there. She just wrote a book. I hope she said good things about it. I don't know. I didn't. So busy. She just wrote a book called Melania. I go out and buy it. It's great. And if she says bad things about me, I'll call you all up and I'll say, don't buy it. Get rid of it. No, but she said to me, I said, David, did you see the crowd? We had 18,000 people. We could have filled it up three or four times. Bruce Blakeman said to me, you know, he said to me, you know, if we went to a stadium or a park, we would have had 100,000 people or more. So I'd call up my wife, and 
I'd say, maybe who can draw crowds? Nobody can draw crowds like me. Nobody, not even close. I'm the greatest of all time, maybe greater even than Elvis, because Elvis had a guitar. I don't have a guitar. Elvis had a guitar. I don't have the privilege of a guitar. But I'd say, baby, who can do it like me? Nobody can do it like me. How great am I? And she'd say, you know, and she'd say, I'd say, how great was the speech? Not how good. How great was it? And she'd say, it was good, but your hair looked terrible. <laughs> or the worst ever. I said, how good was it, first lady? And she said, it was good, but you couldn't find your way off the stage. I was imitating Biden, and they said I did it. I couldn't find my way off the stage. Uh, so you can't be sarcastic. Sarcasm with the media doesn't work. So I've given up about, I've given up about 90% of it. I got all my friends here, Anthony, 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 stand up, Anthony, Anthony. 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 one of the greats of all time. He said, I have a big business problem, what? I have too much cash, I don't know what to do. I said, I've heard of, I've heard of voice problems in that, Anthony. He's doing good, he's a great man, great businessman, he's a great person. Capital wants income tax hikes, small business tax hikes. Capital gains tax hike. How about the capital gains? She wants to tax unrealized capital gains. That means she wants to give you a capital gain. Even if you want to tax, she wants to give you a capital gain even if you didn't sell it. You know, I know a lot of people that are rich, but they don't have cash. They're rich, but they don't have cash. You know, it's like that. Farmers are like that. They have great land, great everything. They make income, but they don't have cash. And you know, they I got rid of the estate tax. So that, or the death tax, as they would call it. So that when you die and you pass it on to your children who you love, if you don't love your children, then it's not going to do you any good. And there are those. Does anybody in this incredible arena, does anybody in this incredible arena not love their job? Who in the arena is rich and will not leave their money to their kids? Because if that's the case, then what they did for you was a pain in the Do I have any hands? 20,000 people have no hands. Okay, who wants to leave their money to their kids? Well, you know, in the old days, you'd leave the money to the kids and the kids were have to go out and borrow money, they'd lose everything. They had to borrow money from a bank at a high rate of interest. Now they don't have to do that anymore. Now you can leave your farm, you can leave your small business to your kids, but Kamala wants to end that. She wants to end it. She wants to raise the tax to a level that nobody's ever heard of before, and it's crazy. We will go in to a different place. This is a wise guy. This guy. I thought I'm getting ready. ready. I'm doing the juice. Yeah, I got a little bit of a yip problem here. Right? That was amazing. I was all ready to start duking it out. I felt like my man in the front row. Stand up, will you please? This is the toughest man. You know him? Do you all know? I'm going to introduce you later so you can see. He's the toughest guy. If somebody walked on the stage, he wouldn't be afraid. He would already be attacking the poor guy. Yeah, that was interesting, wasn't it? It's the first time that's ever happened, I think. Is he new to the game? I think so. By contrast, I will cut taxes for families, small businesses, and workers, including restoring the SALT deduction, saving thousands of dollars for residents of New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and other high cost Store, salt, jobs and factories will pour back into New York. I know how to do it better than anybody's ever known how to do it, and we can do it so easily. Wages will soar, the cost of living will fall, 
and I will deliver the greatest economy in the history of the world to our country, and one of the greatest economies in the history of New York State. And a key part of restoring safety and saving our economy is stopping the invasion at the border of our country. It's crazy. Under border czar Kamala Harris, you know, she was the border czar until she started looking at this situation, until the coup. I say until the coup, because it was a coup. But she was the border czar. Now she said I was never the border czar. You know what? Give her that. But she was in charge of the border. And the border is the worst run border in the history of the world. There's never been a border like this. 21 million people. Illegal aliens are coming in from all over the world, from prisons and jails, from mental institutions and insane asylums. Many tourists are coming in just to watch. Did you ever see this? You have tourists that line up to take pictures of it. They usually turn out to be the fake news, and the pictures are so bad they never show it. You know, the fake news never, ever talks about it, but we have massive numbers of terrorists coming in to our country. You have everybody coming in. We have people that can't speak the language. The great Tom Holman told me the other day, great guy, central casting guy, great guy. He told me the other day, last month, they figured it out for the last 12 months, 168 different countries came in, represented, and came into our country. Hundreds, most people don't even know you have that many countries. You actually have over 200, but most people don't know. But I want to be known as one thing. In 2016, I probably won because of the border. I did a great job. I cleaned it up and the border was good. And in 2020, even though I got millions and millions more votes, they said, sir, if you get the same number of votes as you did in 2016, 63 million, sir, you cannot lose. I got millions more and I lost. But you know what? We're going to have the greatest win in history when we pull this one. Legendary. But in 2020, my people say, Sir, uh, it doesn't help for you to speak about the border. Nobody cares. I said, I want to speak about the border. I did a great job. Sir, nobody cares. It's true. I talk about the border. Nobody cared. But now they care. Because now the border is. 25 times worse than it was in 2016. Now the border is not even believable what's happening. And I want to be known as your border president. I'm going to be known as your border president. And Kamala will be known as your innovation president. They've taken over your buildings and your land. You gotta do something about it. That wouldn't happen with Bruce Blakeman, I can tell you right now. Bruce, would you let people come in from a foreign country like Venezuela, where, by the way, their crime rate is down 72% because they've taken their prisoners, they've taken their gangs, they've taken their drug dealers, and they've shipped them all to the United States, so their crime rate's down. But Bruce, would you ever, would you ever tell the people that you're supposed to be protecting when they go, a lot of Venezuelans are in that very big guns. Would you say, listen, I don't really want to do anything about it. Would you do that or would you say, don't worry, we'll have a force of people over there within minutes and we'll all be I think so. And they're both sisters. Even play games. Even play games. 
But you know, these people, the law enforcement, they're, they're afraid of these places because it's so violent. And they've never seen people like this. These are violent people that they're allowing into our country. It is truly an invasion, and we're not going to let it happen. We're going to take those violent people and we're going to ship them back to their country. And if they come back in, they're going to pay a hell of a price. Thank you. We have no choice. We have no choice. It's not like, you know, this is not sustainable by any right here. This is not sustainable. How about in Springfield, Ohio? They had 32,000. This is a little beautiful town. No crime, no problem. 32,000 illegal immigrants come into the town, 32. So they almost doubled their population in a period of a few weeks. And you know what? They've got to get much tougher. I'm going to go there in the next two weeks. I'm going to Springfield and I'm going to go uh... You may never see me again, but that's okay. surrender our country. That's what they're doing. They still refuse to acknowledge that these people have to be taken out. And you start with the stone cold killers, the murderers, the drug dealers. You start, you get them out, and you tell them if they ever come back, big trouble. But let me tell you what you really do. Some of them are so bad you can't take the chance of sending them out because they'll come back. You lock them up and they're going to be there for a long time. And when they know that, when they know that, you'll see a whole big difference. As you know, here on Long Island, the open borders policies of Kamala Harris, and it were really her policies that the communist left, I call it the communist left, have been importing MS-13 gang members by the thousands. I don't know what it is about Long Island, but you know, I took thousands and thousands of gang members out. Do you remember the story? Remember, I came into the presidency and MS-13 was on my mind because I saw that in Long Island, two beautiful young girls were walking to school, they were 16 years old, and an MS-13 gang of deviants grabbed the girls and sliced them up into pieces. Not with guns, they didn't want guns. They killed the two girls, they sliced them into little pieces. And I never forgot that. And then I found out that things like that are happening all over, whether they are MS-13, the worst gang anywhere. The only thing good about that is they make our gangs look like very nice people. I want to tell you. These are the worst people. They're animals. And Nancy Pelosi said, you shouldn't call people animals. That's not appropriate. They're animals. That's the philosophy. And I said, I got to the White House. And I said, they have a lot in Ohio, a lot in every state. And I said, I want MS-13 out of here. They come from various places. A little bit, a little bit south of Mexico. They come from Mexico too. And I said, "What I want you to do is, I want to bring them out." And the general said, "Sir, I'm sorry, sir. The countries will not, under any circumstances, allow us to bring them back in. They don't want them anymore, sir." I said, "How long has this been going on? Many years during the Barack Hussein Obama. Has anyone ever heard of him?" Many years, sir, under the Barack Hussein Obama administration. 
It's been going on for years, so they won't take them. You know what they did? They would take Honduras, okay? Think of it. They would take planes, and they would put them on the runways. They would put the planes, El Salvador, or different countries, some of the roughest gangs. They put big commercial aircraft. So when a plane is going to fly in with two or 300 MS-13 killers, you couldn't land the plane. They said, sir, we can't get them back. All of the bus routes are blocked. We can't get the buses in. And when they know a plane is coming, they put planes on the runway. Sir, we won't be able to do it. I said, I think you will. How much money do we pay them for? Economic development of the dictator's house. How much money do we pay them, General? I'll get back to you, sir. He comes back the next day. Sir, we pay them $750 million a year. It's a lot. Let me tell you, it's peanuts compared to some of the money that we pay, but it's a lot of money. I said, inform these countries that under no circumstances are they getting any money anymore. They're not getting any money. They are delinquent. They're not allowing us to bring back people that they force into our country through tra caravan. So they informed them, and the next day I get to the Oval Office nice and early, and uh, I get calls from three particular countries separately. Sir, there seems to be a problem or a misunderstanding. I said, yeah, there is a misunderstanding. You're not taking your MS-13 people that you sent into our country. You're not taking them back. And I'm going to not give any money to your country forever. You're never getting 10 cents. And in all cases, they said something to the effect, sir, sir, it is so bad that I didn't know about this. I wish I would have known about it. We would love to take MS-13 back into our country. We love them very much. We will take them back, sir. And that day, that afternoon, we started bringing them out of our country by the thousands and thousands and thousands. And the worst part of the story is, now, I still didn't pay them. <laughs> but, but now they're getting $4 billion a year under Biden. Biden said, do it. Maybe she knew about it. I don't want to blame her if she didn't, but four billion. You know why? Because he wants them to create a beautiful environment so that they say that that's not going to happen. Okay, the money's going to be stolen all over the place. So instead of 750, it's now at four billion dollars. An estimated 75% of arrests in Midtown Manhattan and over 60% of arrests in Queens are now illegal aliens. Congratulations. Congratulations. And you know this, in Queens a few months ago, an illegal alien released by Kamala Harris, she was in charge of the border, approached two 13-year-old children with a machete in broad daylight, forced them into the woods, tied them together by the wrists and raped them, injured them terribly, very badly, you know about it. In the Bronx, another illegal alien that Kamala Harris set loose into our country approached a 36-year-old woman while pretending to ask for directions. Ma'am, he said, I'd like directions to someplace. Before he wrapped his arms around her throat, pinned her down on a park bench, and raped her all night and beat the hell out of her. And you know what she said? She said, he didn't rape me, he tried to kill me. That was her expression when the police said, and on Coney Island, a place I know well, just weeks ago, two migrants, Kamala, let in, raped a 46-year-old woman with a knife to her throat. She was badly, badly beaten, probably going to live. For every New Yorker being terrorized by this wave of migrant crime, and I've been talking about migrant crime for five years, I said, if you let them in, it's going to be hell. They are vicious, violent criminals that are being led into our country. They're people that they're countries who are very smart. They don't want them. That's why all over the world, a lot of people are coming from jails out of the Congo in Africa. Where do you come from, the Congo? Where in the Congo? We come from jail. What did you do? We will not tell you. They're coming from the Congo, they're coming from Africa, they're coming from the Middle East, they're coming from all over the world, Asia. A lot of them are coming from Asia. 
And what's happening to our country is we're just destroying the fabric of life in our country and we're not gonna take it any longer. And you gotta get rid of these people. Give me a shot. You will have a safe New York within three months. Three months. For every New Yorker being terrorized by this wave of migrant crime, November 5th will be your liberation day. It's going to be liberation because you are living like hell. You're living a life like hell. I will launch a special task force of elite federal law enforcement people, many of whom I already know, that are tough, and charge them with crushing the MS-13 remnants. You know, the problem is I got them out, and now they come back in. They just walk back in like there's nothing to it. But eliminating MS-13 and every foreign gang and organized criminal network opening up on American soil. They're coming in by the millions, not by the hundreds. They're coming in by the millions. Think of it, probably 21 million people. That's probably a, a low number. We can do all of this and more, but patriotic New Yorkers must get your asses out to vote. Get it out. Get your fat ass out of the couch. You're gonna vote for Trump today, Harry. Get up, Harry. Come on, let's go. Let's go, Harry. We got a vote. And I believe we have the vote. You know, it's an interesting thing. Evangelical Christians, they tend not to vote very much. If they did, you'd never lose. Gun owners, I have the total endorsement of the NRA, have had it from the beginning. Gun owners don't vote, meaning they don't vote in a proportion that they should. Very small numbers vote. It's probably rebellion, who knows what it is. The gun owners have to get out and vote. Evangelicals, Christians have to get out and vote. People have to get out. There are some groups that don't vote like they should, and we're gonna win. We're pleased to be joined tonight by members of Congress that are really terrific, that are warriors, really warriors. And one of them in particular, I love what she did to that woman at Harvard. Oh, that was not pretty. Elise Stefanak, where is Elise? Where is she? Where is she? She is so great. Where the hell is she? Thank you, Elise. Boy, she was great. Mark Molinaro. Great. Nick Lalota. Thank you. Great job. He's doing a good job. Here's another one doing a good job. I gave him a big endorsement, Anthony D'Esposito. He's doing a great job. Thank you, Anthony. Salt. Salt, Anthony. Remember, fellas. Salt. Brandon Williams. Doing great. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you very much. Nick Langworthy, terrific guy. Claudia Tenney, where's Claudia? Where's Claudia? She's been amazing. Congressional candidates, Mike LePetri. Where's Mike? Thank you, Mike. Good. I heard you leading big. And Allison Esposito, she's a tough one. Allison, thank you. Thank you very much. It's tough, you know, when you have this many people, I'm looking around, where's one person? Thank you very much, Allison. Beautiful. Senate candidate, Mike Sapriacone. Mike Sapriacone. Come on, Mike. Where's Mike? You got to win, Mike. We got to win that one, Mike. You can do that. You can do that. A former senator and a friend of mine for a long time. And we had disputes every once in a while, but generally I would say it was a 10 relationship. And it was a tough cookie. Senator Al D'Amato. Right? Good man. Good man. A great lawyer and congressman, and he helped me a lot doing impeachment hoax number one and impeachment hoax number two. They were hoaxes. Congressman Lee Zeldin. That's great. And he's a big part of our campaign, and I want to bring him to Washington with us. He's a great, a 
Get ready. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, who's yeah. fantastic. A mayor who was a fantastic mayor. Very shy kind of a guy. He took crime. It was terrible. It was at a level that was as bad as today. And he made New York the safest big city in the world. Rudy Giuliani. His son, who happens to be a great golfer, a lot of people say, oh, how's Andrew? Not that good, let me tell you, he's seriously good. Andrew Giuliani, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew, did a good job. And a very beautiful little boy who went through hell, but I brought him some presents. That's why I was late for you today. I brought him presents. I said, Liam, do you think the crowd of 20,000 plus a lot of people outside. You know, we put up big televisions on the back of the building, but that's not my game here. It's wonderful. Hello out there. I hope you like it. Big, big, beautiful screens. We have big screens. Not quite like being in the third row, first row. But Liam LeCastro is here, and he is a great young man. He's, he's gone through, he's gone through a lot. But he's going to be better soon, right, Liam? And I got him the most beautiful present. He's a great boy, great parents, beautiful sister. Also with us are members of New York City Firefighters Union, Local 94, the largest in the city. Thank you, fellas. Incredible people. And in their honor, I'm on. And, and I think this is a big deal, because in your honor, I am announcing tonight that as president, I will officially make the Ground Zero site at the World Trade Center a national monument, protected and maintained by the United States So that hallowed ground and the memory of those who perished there will be preserved for all time. Preserved for all time. A lot of great people. I met him last week. Thank you. USA! 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 Thank you. Well, and I met him last week with the ceremony, and it was a beautiful ceremony, and uh, met a lot of fantastic people. The New Yorkers who created the 9-11 National Memorial Museum really did an amazing job, didn't they? And many of them are here today, and I want to thank them. And I want to ensure that their outstanding work is sustained forever, and that's what we've done by doing this. So we are just 48 days away from the most important election in American history. The most important. The most important. Stand up. I Just now you can stand up. They didn't put your name down. Turn around. Who is he? Name him. He took care of business, right? It's my man. Good. Boy, I'm glad I didn't forget you. Good guy. Good friend of mine for a long time. Whenever I had problems, I'd look at him and they'd say, let's leave Trump alone. Thank you, man. Thank you. We appreciate it. Great, great job. Kamala Harris is... For wide open borders with terrorists and criminals pouring into our country, more inflation, even higher than the last four years, which was a record. She wants to pack the Supreme Court. Think of that one. And today, I heard it all. I thought they wanted maybe 11, maybe they wanted 13. That's an unlucky number, so maybe it would be 15 instead of nine, but instead of nine, Kamala wants to bring up potentially as many as 25 justices so that they can rig the system like they rig everything else, including elections. And maybe one of the worst things of all, she is a true believer. And again, I said this before, if you wanted to fund the police, if you've been there even for a day, 
in your mind you wanted to fund the police even for one day, you are not qualified to be the President of the United States. Because anybody who wants to defund the police, we can't have it. We can't have it. It'll go down. It'll go down. We're not going to let, we're not going to let our country fail. It's too great. And you know what? If we don't win this election, it's very possible we'll never have another chance. We have to do it. You have to get out. You have to vote. But Kamala vowed to abolish ICE. She supports free health care for illegal aliens. How about that one? You don't get free health care. These are all things that she was for years. Now, for the last little while, she's saying, no, I don't really think I thought was right anymore. 15 different things. She wants mass amnesty and citizenship for all illegals, which means totally bankrupting Social Security and Medicare. She wants to put illegal aliens into your Social Security and your Medicare system, which guarantees their bankruptcy. She says, we must not utter the words illegal alien again or radical Islamic terrorist again. And think of this, during her three and a half year, to me, this is the worst thing I talk about tonight. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. During her period of three and a half years, she was in charge of the border. She lost more than 325,000 migrant children, many of whom have been trafficked, raped, and many of whom are dead, many of whom are dead. Three, think of what that is. That's like Yankee Stadium filled up many, many times. Think of it. Think of it. As California Attorney General, she redefined child sex trafficking, assault with a deadly weapon, and rape of an unconscious person. I'd never heard of this. Rape of a very unconscious person as totally nonviolent crimes. She vowed repeatedly to ban fracking. She imposed a natural gas export ban that is crushing the state of Pennsylvania. I'm way up in Pennsylvania, by the way. This helps. And she's not gonna let, you know. The day after the election, all of these things come back. I hope you know that. She praised the idea of a tax rate of between 70 and 80 percent and her only idea for solving inflation is to impose communist inspired price controls which have never worked she pledged to abolish does anybody here have private health care you worked hard she wants to she wants to abolish anybody that's worked hard and made some money private health care no more private health care and force everyone into a socialist government run health care with high taxes and deadly wait times. And she even endorsed free sex change operations for illegal aliens in detention, all at taxpayers. Now think of that one. They come into the country illegally and they say, I want to change my sex. Oh, that's so cool. She's totally in favor of it. I'm sure she'll deny it now, but she, that's what she in 2021, Joe Biden tasked Kamala Harris with bringing broadband to rural America. Rural America was dying for it and gave her $42 billion to do the job. Three years later, right now, not a single home has been connected to broadband. Everyone said, what happened to the money? $42 billion, not one home. And in the Midwest, you read this, in the Midwest, they built eight charging stations. That's like a gas pump with electricity, right? Eight. They spent nine billion dollars to build eight charging stations. Other than that, other than that, it really works well. I will end the electric mandate on cars. And I have to say this, look, Elon Musk is great, he's a great guy. And he makes a great car. And as strong as I am with this, because I think they're incredible, but it's limited. Some people want them and some people love them. I think they're incredible. And he makes a great product, maybe the best product I hear. And he understands this. Some people have to go far distances. Some people don't want the additional cost. Some people don't want their car built in China. Electric cars will be built in China. I'm going to bring back the auto industry. We're going to have 
gasoline powered cars. We're going to have hybrids. We're going to have electric cars. We're going to have everything. The new one is hydrogen. I heard about that the other day. Hydrogen. There's one little problem. If it blows up, you're dead. It's great until one day there's a little bit of a problem, Anthony, and it blows up. And when that happens, it's not a pretty picture. So I, I think I'll take a pass on that one, if you don't mind, for a while. And just today, three agencies of the Kamala Harris and Joe Biden administration, the FBI, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence and Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, they just released a report confirming that Iran actors hacked into the Trump campaign's email accounts and in turn sought to give the hack materials to the Biden-Harris campaign. They gave them all of the materials because Biden is working with Iran and Iran doesn't exactly like me because they were ready to make a deal except we had an election that was rigged and stolen. And look at what's happening to our world now. But no, Iran hacked into my campaign. I don't know what the hell they found. I'd like to find out. Couldn't have been too exciting. But they gave it to the Biden campaign. I can't believe it. Oh, yes, I can. But this is really foreign election interference. This is real election interference, not the phony crap that they've been trying to pin on me with Russia, Russia, Russia for years. Whatever happened to Russia, Russia, Russia? Remember the 51 intelligence agents? They said, no, no. The laptop from hell. It's Russia. No, it was Hunter. Remember that? We had to go two and a half years and then they finally said, all right. The Mueller, remember Mueller? He said, in, in millions of phone calls, Trump didn't make one to Russia. They went through every phone call I made. Can you imagine? In millions of calls, not one call. To them. And a lot of people apologize for that, but not enough people apologize. They wasted time and money. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars going after me, and they got nothing. They got nothing. But we cannot allow this insanity to continue anymore. That's why. Less than two months from now, we are going to tell Kamala that we've had enough. Kamala, you've been a terrible vice president. You will be an even worse president. We're not going to take it anymore, Kamala. Kamala, you're fired. Get out. You're fired. We're not going to take it anymore, Kamala. back the White House from Kamala Harris. I believe we are going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. Starting on day one, I will seal the border and stop the migrant invasion. An invasion like no country has ever seen before. We will stop it immediately. We will carry out the largest deportation operation of criminals in American history. We're getting them out of our country. We will make America the dominant energy producer in the world by far. We have more than anybody else. And we have literally, we have more, think of it, we have more than Saudi Arabia. We have more than anybody else, especially when you end. And war in Alaska, which we will reinstitute immediately. We're going to use it along with growth. We are going to grow, grow, grow to start paying down our debt. We have $35 trillion in national debt. We're all set to do it. And then we got hit by COVID. We had a focus on that. And then we gave back. You know, I got a great, I got great marks on the military. We took out ISIS, wiped out ISIS 100%. We did it in four weeks. It was supposed to take four years, five years. 
And I got great marks in the economy, never got great marks in COVID because they didn't want to give them to me. But the fact is, we did an unbelievable job. Nobody knew what the hell it was. It came from China. It came from the Wuhan lab. I said all these things. And we did an unbelievable job. And we handed over a country whose stock market was higher than it was just prior to COVID coming in. And amazing. But we did have to focus on that. Think of what China did to us. The world has $60 trillion and millions and millions of people dead over that disaster. Think of that. The whole world, even China, suffered very much. They suffered at the end more than almost anybody. I will turn the United States into a manufacturing superpower more than it has ever been before. We're going to bring back the car industry. We're going to bring back the car industry. Other countries that make us pay a tax to do business with them will be charged the same tax when they send their product into the United States. We have countries, not only China, many, many countries, many of them are allies. Some of the worst trading companies countries are allies. Don't let that word surprise you. They're allies, they're friends of ours, and they take advantage of us horribly on the military with NATO and on trade. It will be called the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act, and if China or any other country charges us a 200 or 100 or 300 percent tax, then we will charge them a like. 100, 200, 300 percent tax in return. You charge us, we charge you. And my message is very simple. Make your product right here in Uniondale. Make your product in America. Make your product in America and only in America. And if you do that, Bruce, you won't have to pay a tax. And they'll be coming in here like you wouldn't believe, right? The worst that happens, we'll take in a lot of money, but we don't even want that. We want them to make their product. We're going to bring back the auto industry. Right now, China is building some of the largest auto plants in the world, and they're building them in Mexico. And they think they're going to build these massive plants, literally the biggest in the world. They're going to make millions of cars and sell them without tax across our border. We will put a tariff on all of those cars to a point where they won't be able to sell them because we want them to build their plants in the United States and hire many of the people in this audience, and that's what's going to happen. And we also have something that's basic, but wow. People said, you're really smart. Where the hell did you think of this one? No tax on tips. So if you're a waitress, a caddy, a driver, but maybe better, no tax on overtime. And we'll get it done. We'll get it done. Unlike him with student loan debt that went nowhere, just to talk. We get it. I get it all done. Remember what they say, promises made, promises kept. That's me. And ready? Here's for the seniors. Do we have any seniors in the audience? Raise your hand. You ready? No tax on Social Security benefits. No tax on Social Security benefits. And you know why you deserve it? Because you lived like hell with the highest inflation probably in the history of our country and you couldn't make ends meet. Now you're not going to have to pay tax on your Social Security benefit. And I will always protect Social Security and Medicare, and they won't. They're going to destroy it. They're putting the migrants all over the place, including there. And while working Americans catch up, we're going to put a temporary cap on credit card interest rates. We're going to cap it at around 10%. We can't let them make 25 and 30%. We will terminate the Green News scam and spend trillions of dollars. We're going to take the Green News scam, one of the greatest scams in the history of our country. Remember when they used to say global warming? 
They don't say that anymore. They say climate change because the planet's actually getting cooler. Climate change, Chuck. Climate change is different. Just Chuck Zito. Oh, I feel safe with him in the front row. Are you afraid of climate change, Chuck? Because now it's no longer global warming because that wasn't working so well because it was getting cooler. Now it's climate change because that covers if it's warmer, it's cooler. We're going to take all of that money. We're going to take it and we're going to rebuild. We're going to take this money from the green news scam. It's a green news scam, one of the greatest scams in history. And we're going to spend it on roads and bridges and real infrastructure. And we're going to pay down debt, not fake infrastructure that's caused massive inflation and has no benefit whatsoever for our country. And I will settle the war in Ukraine. I got along very well with Putin and Zelensky. And I will end the chaos in the Middle East. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote to obliterate Israel. That's what's going to happen, Israel. Israel will not exist in two years. And by the way, we are closer to World War III right now than at any time during anybody's life in this beautiful room. I will stand with Israel and we will return a thing called peace through strength. And we're going to get it settled. We're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. We're not going to have war in the Middle East. We're not going to have war with Russia and Ukraine. You know, when I was there, we didn't have any war other than ISIS. I finished them off. We knocked out al-Baghdadi, the founder of ISIS. Think of that. We knocked them off. It was supposed to take four to five years. I did it in four weeks. General, General Raisin Kane, what's your name? Kane, sir, what's your first name? Well, they called me Raisin. I said, your name is Raisin Kane. That's the general I was looking. He did it in four weeks. The Russian attack on Ukraine and the October 7th attack on Israel would never have happened if I was president. Would never have happened. Think of what the world would be and think of what our nation would be with no Russia-Ukraine war, no October 7th disaster in Israel and the Middle East. It was just, it's inflamed right now. It's inflamed like nobody's seen it for 50 years. No inflation and energy dominance. That's what we would have, energy dominance. We'd have no inflation. We wouldn't have either the Middle East or the Russia, Ukraine. What a different world it would be, wouldn't it be? Oh, uh, we can't let them cheat on elections anymore. We, can't we will rebuild our cities, including Washington, D.C., making them safe, clean, and beautiful again. Right now, we have a, a capital that when you go down there, you have a damn good chance of being hurt, bumped, something. And we will keep the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. We're losing that, but I'll keep it. I'll keep it. China wants to take it over, and if that happened to us, that would be like losing a war. That would be the biggest thing. That would make us the third world country. We will keep our dollar as the reserve currency. Remember I said it, and it will be easy. It'll be easy. But this is how we will end the era of inflation, mayhem, misery under Kamala and Crooked Joe and unleash safety, prosperity, and peace for Americans of every race, religion, color, and creed. That's what we're going to do. Together we will deliver low taxes, low regulations, low energy costs, low interest rates, low inflation, so that everyone can afford groceries, a car, and a home. Very simple. We will stop the invasion, end migrant crime, support our police, strengthen our military. I want to wish a happy 77th birthday to the United States Air Force. And if you remember, I created Space Force, which was the last since Air Force, which will soon be five years old. Space Force has turned out to be very important. We will build a missile defense shield around our country. Keep 
critical race theory and transgender insanity out of our schools, and we will keep men out of women's sports. We will defend the Second Amendment, restore free speech, and we will secure our elections, and we will secure our borders. Everyone will prosper, every family will thrive, and every day will be filled with opportunity and hope. But for that to happen, we must defeat Kamala Harris and the Crooked Democrats, and we must stop her country destroying liberal agenda once and for all. So get everyone you know and vote. We want a landslide that is very simply too big, too big, too big to rig. Right, Bruce? Too big to rig. Joe, too big to rig. Too big to rig, Joe. I think we can do that. So on November 5th, we will save our economy. We will rescue our middle class. We will reclaim our sovereignty and restore our borders. We will put America first and we will take back our country because together we will make America powerful again. Make America wealthy again. Make America healthy again. Make America strong again. Make America proud again. Make America safe again. Make America free again. And we will